Okay, this is one of the biggest things that drives me absolutely crazy. I see it in different examples of welding all over the place, and even from professionals who have been doing welding for years. So let's get into some tips that are gonna get you better results much quicker. Now, this subject is something that I've talked about on my channel a little bit before, but honestly, this never fails to be something that I could mention more as I still see tons of problems with this. Now, take a look at this photo here. This is what is typical when I see a lot of people working around corners. As we can see from this example here, we have a couple passes, and these passes have been done working around the corner here. Now again, taking a look at this example here, this is one of the most common things that I see when people are working around corners or changing directions around a pipe or a curve or a shape in general. We can see that in between the two passes here, unfortunately we have an improper connection between them. And because of this, we can see that we have a gap or a void in between the two passes right here. Now honestly, whether this is aluminum, mild steel, stainless steel, whatever, it honestly doesn't matter what it's made of, Unfortunately, this is a welding flaw that can cause big problems down the line if not taken care of at this point here. Now, aluminum, for example, is a little bit softer than like mild steel or stainless steel or whatever. And when you have welding distortion or stuff straining on the part or the joint after the fact that it has been welded, unfortunately, this is gonna put a lot of strain and pressure on an intersection of welding like this here. If we have any open corners or gaps or voids like what we're looking at here, this is going to be extremely prone to any cracking or something like that forming later on down the line. And honestly, it's very surprising how easily some of these things can happen. We may have cracks that form in the actual area like this here. And again, this can be caused by a weak corner that has been left open like this one here. And commonly, a lot of people will think that a weld will only fail in the area that we see done improperly. But honestly, some of these flaws can actually transfer pressure or distortion into areas that you might not even think about. And we may see the failure occur in other areas like this here. Now, if this was mild steel or even stainless steel or something like that, this absolutely could be a point of corrosion that we would have to deal with, especially like where I live. I live like really close to the ocean. And even in some circumstances, I've seen certain types of stainless steel start to corrode. So that's right, if it's not done properly, no metal is safe. So now we can understand why this potentially could be such a big problem. What do we do about it? Okay, we take a look at this example here. Now we can see that this is a much better solution to connect each of these welding passes together. Not only are these two passes connected and this corner is now sealed up properly, but come on, when they're sealed up properly, this looks absolutely awesome as well. Going around a profile like this and keeping good consistency always looks great. So this is what I'm gonna show you how to do right now. Now, when I'm working with my online students in my TIG welding program, this is something that we work on pretty intentionally in the final project in the program. We take a lot of the exercises that the students have learned up to this point. We put all these exercises together into a little project that not only challenges the welding that we've learned so far, but it also presents an opportunity where we have some real world situations of connecting our welds properly. So when I teach somebody welding around a corner like this, I encourage them to think about it in a completely different way. I literally want to change the way somebody thinks about working around a corner like this. So let's break it down, check it out. Looking at this here, the typical mistake that a lot of people make is they look at this area as if it were two welding passes. We can see one weld coming in this way, stops here, and then continues down the other side. Two passes. Now when I'm training somebody to deal with a situation like this joint here, instead of thinking about it as if we were doing two separate passes, I encourage them to think about things as if they were doing it in three passes. Now, I break this down into a couple different categories. The first is gonna be working with a straight pass. And the second thing is gonna be specifically working on the corner. So we are gonna keep the straight welding as straight welding. And we're gonna keep the corners, corners. So typically what happens is that when somebody starts welding and running down the first pass, when they're getting to the corner, they try and reach a little bit further, then they go set up for the second pass. And it is very common that we see this problem here where there is a gap or a void in between the two passes or where the two passes have been connected improperly. So when we're gonna go about thinking about things in the way that I'm recommending here, let's think about doing the first pass completely perfect. We're gonna keep the first straight weld a straight weld. We're gonna run it with extreme detail about keeping things completely organized. We're gonna keep them nice and straight and in line with the joint that we are traveling along. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop just shy of the corner here. Now, if you have put this together and you have a tack on the corner that you now have to deal with, you can stop just shy on the edge of the tack right here. Now, at this point, we have not attempted to do anything with the corner yet. 
We've essentially created a perfect situation that we are now ready to deal with it. Now at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna reset, and I'm gonna get comfortable again. And now I'm just going to focus on welding the corner. Now when I'm welding around a corner like this, I actually tend to think about it as if I'm welding around a little semicircle instead of a sharp corner. But we are gonna take extreme care to turn around this corner carefully. As I am traveling around the corner, I'm trying to keep the profile on the bottom line of the bottom plate. And you can see that I am now terminating the wrap on the exact opposite place on the corner where I did my last termination. Each time, whenever I finish one of these welds, whether it is on one of the straight passes or on a corner, I'm essentially planning to put this in the exact area I need it to be so that this can be a proper setup for the weld that comes after it. Now, I have said this many times on my channel before, the thing that determines how the next pass goes is the finish from the pass before it. Now I've taken the time to actually set up a perfect pocket of welding that I can start my next pass from. Again, doesn't matter whether I'm doing another straight pass or if I'm welding around a corner, whatever. Now that I'm sure the corner has been performed properly, I can now with confidence start up the next straight shot and do it with no issues. All right, come here for a second. Instead of making you watch a YouTube ad at this point in the episode here right now, I'm gonna take a moment to tell you about my free TIG welding class that I just put online. This is a 30 minute class that I used to teach in person and I now have done it in an online setting. There is no catch to this. This is absolutely free. So after you finish watching this episode, make sure you finish it. Click the link in the description below and register for this class. You just put your email in, it gets sent to you, it's free. You're gonna learn a ton of stuff about smart ways to get going with TIG welding aluminum. I'll see you there. Now you can see how I have broken this into three different steps instead of two. Take a look at the cap of this welding project here. We can basically see that there is a square shape or something, and we have welding that is going around the top of it here. So taking a look at it, instead of thinking about this in four separate passes because it has four sides, we are actually gonna look at this as if there are eight steps instead of four. So we have four straight welds that we have to do. And we also have four corners that we need to perform properly to connect them all. So not only are we gonna properly connect each of these passes, we're actually gonna take some time to make proper connections so that the consistency of this looks awesome. We can see that this has some pretty good flow going around the corners to connect each pass. Again, this is literally only a dab or two of filler material, hardly anything at all. But because I've taken the time to properly turn the corner independently of each straight pass, I can now run each straight pass with absolute confidence that they are connected properly and the consistency is gonna look great. All right, let's break this down in an even more exaggerated example here. This is something that I did on my channel like a week or two ago, I can't even remember. I was essentially trying to demonstrate how to make a weld look better by using a radius instead of a sharp corner, but I broke things down pretty much exactly in the same way that I'm talking about here right now. I have one straight shot that follows along the joint here to here. At this point, I stopped completely, I reset, I got comfortable again. And after I was ready, I set up and I started welding the radius corner here. Now again, like I talked about, this corner is a little bit exaggerated on this one, but performing this corner independently of the two straight passes, this has set me up perfectly to perform each straight pass with great comfort and I'm able to keep things following the joint perfectly. Again, instead of thinking about working around a corner in two separate passes or whatever, it was broken down into three separate passes so not only did we ensure that everything is connected properly, but doing it with good consistency, it turned out silky smooth. Trying to do your straight shot as well as the corner all in one go can make for a lot of different details that you need to learn to pay attention to on the fly. That's gonna get really overwhelming, so please make this easy for yourself. Pay attention to these details about working around a corner like this and you're gonna get some great looking results. Check out this episode here if you wanna go further on this subject. It's gonna give you a bunch of other really important stuff that you can watch for. Check that episode out next. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty, Phil and Chill. We will talk soon. Peace.